live stream up and uh, screen share. Okay. Is can you hear me? Okay, uh, Game Warrior. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with her end. I mean, I could check and see if I can turn it up a little bit on the settings. Maybe I don't know if it's that or what. See, I'm just saying you probably uh, she's probably hearing uh, double from the stream and hearing you at the same time. Yeah, because it looks like I'm turned all the way up in Discord. So yeah, all right. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get going then, and 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 get this stream up on uh, Wire Club. We're on Cosme. We're on Facebook. Let me see if we're actually on YouTube. Well, we are because you're seeing me and hearing me, so we know we're on YouTube. All right, so then we'll see you guys after the service. <laughs> it's weird. I'll be here, but I won't be. No, I'm just kidding. Let's see. Facebook. All right, so I'm seeing if we're going to be okay on Wire Club. Can you hear me on Wire Club and see me? If you click that link, you should be able to see what's happening. Okay. Audi's having a problem apparently getting in. Yeah, Goldie's having a problem getting into Wire Club. She can't see anything. She's oh. in Discord. Sorry, she's in Discord, but she can't see anybody. Oh well, she could have stayed on Wire Club. I'm posting it in Wire Club. Can you see me, Goldie, in Wire Club? I have it up. the The YouTube is up now. Apparently she's not. Okay, well I just posted it again. So maybe she'll see it. Oh, it should be started now. I wait, hold on. Did maybe I didn't did I start it? I started it. Yeah, it's the stream is on. You guys are seeing it, right? You're hearing me on YouTube, correct? I'm I'm getting double I'm getting double hearing. Okay, how can she fix that game where she's getting double hearing? Uh, you're gonna have to mute yourself, Pastor. Okay, I'll mute myself out. Hold on. All right, there we go. Is that better? Yeah. Okay. Now let's see if she can hear me. You might, can't see any of better. us. Yeah, it sounds like it. I don't understand why she. Wait a second. Let me see. No, it says an error occurred. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with that. Let me let me try to figure this out. It's not working on her end. All right. Let's see. Is 
It should be the same link from earlier. It shouldn't be a different link. I don't understand that. Let me see. Let's see if this one works. Yeah, this one works. All right, good. All right, I think we got it now. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started tonight. Um, we appreciate everybody being here. We're praying for new people. And if you're new, we, we want to welcome you to our live stream. Um, Goldie, are you seeing me now and hearing me? Okay, good. All right. Praise God. We're going to open in prayer one more time. Ask God to bless the service tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, cruise over here so I can see what's happening here. All right. Praise God. Lord, tonight we ask your blessing on the service. We ask that the Holy Spirit would be with us. Most importantly, that Jesus Christ would be exalted and praised through all that we do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, what was that? Can we have everybody mute now? Um, mute your mics out. Thank you. You can type in the, uh, if you're in Discord, you can type if you're in Wire Club. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, you have um, a chat. You can type in anytime during the service. I'll try to keep an eye on all the chat in case somebody has a question, issue, or whatever. Um, but uh, otherwise, Let me see. I got this is a new streaming service that we're using tonight. We were having problems with the other ones last week. So I went ahead and uh, I got off of that one because I didn't want to have any problems. So this one here, I can see. All right, cool. All right. Tonight's. Tonight's theme is uh, rain, because we've been getting some rain, finally, after a drought. Send down the rain, Lord, send down the rain, send down the latter rain. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain. We need the latter rain. So send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain. Send down the latter rain. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain. We need the latter rain. So send down the Holy Spirit. Spirit, Lord, send down the latter rain. We need the rain, Lord. We need the rain. We need the latter rain. Send down the rain, Lord. Send down the rain. Send down the latter rain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we need the rain. We need the Holy Spirit. Lord, we need to be filled tonight with your spirit. Hallelujah. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, 
Let it rain. See, now I'm in there. Yep. You see the blue thing? They can hear me. Okay, I won't talk now. I just wanted to make sure I got in church with you guys. Butler. All right, great. Let it, good to see you. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. I'm already in there. That's if he's not in there yet. See, I'm already in there. I don't need to do that. I'm already joined. You got to mute your mic out. Are you on Discord? Yeah, mute your mic out. Is he not on the stream or what? But thanks for uh, making me aware of that. Yeah, he's on Discord. All right, tell him, tell him to mute yourself. out and watch the stream because I don't think he's. I him. will mute myself now. Sorry, forgot that's the okay. background noise. That's okay. That's all right. It's all a work in progress. <laughs> Let it let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain, let it rain, let it rain, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Lord, we want to be filled with your spirit tonight. We want the rain to fall. We want people to know Jesus that don't know you. We want people to be saved. We want people to come to the knowledge of the truth. Let it rain. of heaven and let it rain open the floodgates of heaven and let it rain It's beginning to rain. Hear the voice of the Father. He's saying, Whosoever will come drink of the water. He's promised to pour His Spirit out on your sons and your daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. Turtle doves are singing sweet songs of the morning. The leaves on the trees turn their silver cups to the sky. The silent clouds above are beginning 
together. The barren land is thirsty, and so am I. It's beginning to rain. the voice of my father. He's saying, whosoever will come drink of my water. Promise to pour his spirit out on your son. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. Call your children together, throw wide the door open. When the rain of the Spirit starts to fall. All right, now we're going to feel every vessel he who drinks thirst no more cause it's beginning to rain it's beginning to rain he's promised to pour his spirit on your sons and your daughters if you're thirsty and dry look up to the sky it's beginning to rain amen it's beginning to rain you know, we're not talking about physical rain tonight. We're talking about the Holy Spirit in the Bible who is called the latter rain. And God's promised to give us the former and latter rain. And one thing that's interesting to note is that in the day of Pentecost, when God poured his spirit out on the church, the initial outpouring that came from heaven the Bible says that that was the Feast of Harvest. Isn't it amazing that God pours His Spirit out at, on the Feast of Harvest, which by all means the Holy Spirit was given to help us gather in the harvest of, of, of souls. So to have the Holy Spirit come on that particular festival was amazing. The Holy Spirit of Harvest. Amen. Rushing wind blow through this temple, blowing out the dust within. Come and breathe your breath. Upon me, I've been born again. Holy Spirit, I surrender. Take me where you want to go. Let me find your living water. Plant me deep so I can grow. Jesus, you're the one who 
set in my spirit free. Use me, Lord, glorify your holy name through me. Separate me from this world, Lord. Sanctify my life for you. Daily change me to your image. Help me bear good fruit every day. Drawing closer, the trials come to test my faith. But when all is said and done, Lord, it's been worth the wait. Rushing wind. Through this temple, blowing out the dust within. Come and breathe your breath upon me, for I've been born again. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah to the Lamb who was slain. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, it's good to be here tonight. And uh, we're excited to have these live streams because we have the potential. You know, there's obviously billions of people online. And if you think about it, we're only not even scratching the surface of the people that we could be potentially reaching for Christ and we're going to work on that to we want to we want to bring the gospel to more people obviously that's what that's what we're on here for but we want to encourage you and there's a, a way that you can help us and we don't ask for money we've never really been a ministry we're like the only ministry in the world that doesn't ask for money <laughs> we don't ask for donations I mean that may change down the road but we want you to join us in prayer for this ministry. Jesus Connect has been on line for almost 10 years doing this. And, you know, it's a different kind of ministry because we reach a different audience every day because there's different people coming and going. We have the potential of speaking into somebody's life very quickly, the gospel, and making a difference in people's lives. And that's kind of my message tonight, in a nutshell, I guess. 
Um, if I was to put a title on it, just a second. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 16, Well, let me see where, where, why didn't it give me that? Oh, here we go. In the same way, let your light shine before others that you may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light shine. And tonight I gave a title for this message. Putting on your awesomeness. <laughs> Putting on your awesomeness. Now that's saying a lot. But I believe every one of us tonight hearing this message, if you've been born again, you have within you the, the seed of God's greatness. And that means that there is a limitless opportunity for us to affect people for Christ. If you're on Discord and you would like to chime in, amen, or whatever, you can type it in the, uh, you know, in the stream. So, I mean, I'm checking on that, too, you know. And if you have something, a question or whatever, after, we'll definitely get to it. But if you are on uh, Wire Club, obviously, you know, you can type just like you normally would. It's kind of different because you're seeing a live stream and all of that. But let me put the uh, stream up. We could do that every so often. That way somebody can pop in and they can join it. All right. So welcome. If you're just coming into the service, welcome. So tonight's message is putting on your awesomeness. And I want to start out by reading in Joshua chapter 1. The Old Testament book of Joshua 7 through 9. God gives us a prescription for success. And blessing in our life. It says, Be strong and be very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you might be successful wherever you go. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written therein. Hey, Dan, good to see you. The first thing that God gives us in, in his word, well, not the first thing, but one of the things that when we look at this and we meditate on what it means to put on awesomeness as a Christian, to allow the greatness that God has given us through the new life that we have in Christ Jesus. The first thing is to meditate on his word. Joshua said that we're to, or the Lord said to Joshua rather, that we're to be strong and courageous and careful to obey everything that he has said to us in his word. We're not to turn from it to the right or the left so that we may be successful. And, and that word is literally, it means to be prosperous. And it means to be able to prosper in our journey as a Christian, as we're walking this Christian life. God has put within us his greatness, his own nature. And second, Peter one four. We've been given to be partakers of his divine nature. And that's an incredible thing to be given 
the very uh, same glorious nature is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And when we're born again, that's what happens. The Bible says that his divine nature is in us through Jesus Christ. Second Peter 1 4 says, I swear my eyes are getting worse every day. By which you have been given, by which he has given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. We have been given to be partakers of his divine nature. In every single child of God, there is a seed of greatness that is planted in us. And God wants us to rise to our full potential as a believer. Obviously, Satan wants to do the opposite. He wants to try to, to thwart us or to try to stop us or to try to hinder us. But God has given us these precious promises in his word that if we'll stand on the word of God, if we'll continue, if we'll meditate on, on his word day and night, if we will not depart from it, not turn from the right or to the left, but to stay. And, and there's something about meditating on the word that has to do with using our lips, our mouth, voicing the word of God. He said, let not the word depart out of thy mouth. That's what God said to Joshua. As Joshua was getting ready to lead the children of Israel in, in their arduous journey through the desert against all the enemies and all of that, the, the advice that God gives Joshua is to be meditating, speaking the word of God out of your mouth day and night. Why is that so important? Why is that meditating on the word? Why does God liken it to us speaking it out loud? Because there's power in the word of God. There's power in it, not only to uh, keep us, but to deliver us and to keep us going in the direction that God wants. Jesus said to the devil, it is written in his moment of temptation. Three different times he declares, it is written. And then he, Satan tried to twist the scripture. We know that. That's what he does. He's a, he's a deceiver. He's a liar. He tried to twist the scripture and Jesus spoke the scripture in truth, in defiance to the devil's lie. But in the Old Testament, it is a known fact that the priest would go up and down the streets of Jerusalem with the scrolls, reading it out loud, reading it out loud. And you know what? Something that I learned years ago when I was in Bible college in, in an all night prayer meeting, nobody taught me this, but I was praying. And all of a sudden I began to just, Ran out of things to pray for. <laughs> it was an all-night prayer meeting. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I just took my Bible, walked around, started reading it out loud and praying the Word. Just reading it and praying it. And something happened in me that night that I believe transformed my prayer life. Because all of a sudden, I started seeing how powerful it was when I was speaking God's own Word. When I was saying it out loud, it just became life to me. In that moment and I believe there's something about this that it prepares us for what God wants us to do in our lives and we see it in in John's got in, in first John 3 9 Whoever, man, I can't read this. I need to get a large print Bible. That's ridiculous. Whoever. 
Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. That's one of those scriptures that people argue over. And there is uh, obvious uh, people use that to try to bring out uh, sinless perfection, that we we don't sin anymore as Christians. That's not my point, and I'm not going to. I don't agree with that because other places in the Bible says that if we say we, we haven't sinned, then we make him a liar. So you have to read the Bible rightly. You have to divide it really. But there is something in this verse that I want to look at, that his seed remains in us. And this is the point I want to make tonight. The only reason that we can put on our awesomeness, as it were, is because we have the awesome one living in us. It's not anything to do with us. We are not awesome in and of ourselves. The word in the Hebrew for all means to be fearful and to reverence. Awesome is a playoff of that word, and it simply means that we are awesome if we have the awesome one living in us, if we have God abiding in us. You know, the Bible says greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We have the conqueror living in us. The reason we can do great things for God is because we have the great God abiding in us. It's that simple. His life, his seed is in us as we're born again of the spirit. We have that. James says that the the engrafted word of God, the word of God. This is why it's so important that you study the Bible, that you know the Bible, that you live in the word. The word is a living book. It's not just dead orthodoxy. It is a living, the word of God is sharp. It's alive, sharper than any two-edged sword. And when we have the word of God abiding in us, we have the power of God abiding in us. That transforms us. That changes us inwardly to be what God wants us to be. To be what God wants us to be. And to do what God wants us to do. Therefore lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Receive. The, the original King James says the engrafted word. I like that translation a little better for this verse. Engrafted. We understand what an engrafted process is if you've ever done any gardening. You can engraft a plant into, a, into a, another plant, and the life of the one takes over, and it begins to grow. And, it's, and that's a process, the engrafting. So when God takes his word and he engrafts it into us, his life, his power, his spirit begins to flow through us. And this is is what it's all about. Joshua was told to meditate on God's word day and night, to not depart from it. So here's the condition that God puts on, on this. If, there's that word, if, if you will not depart from my law, if you will keep my word, if you will meditate on it, if you will do. Now, this comes back to obedience. It comes back to obeying God. I don't care how spiritual somebody is. I don't care how many spiritual gifts a person has. I don't care how high somebody can jump in in the spirit praising God. If they're not obeying God. This is a problem that Paul had with the Corinthian church. They were very charismatic. They had the gifts. But they weren't obeying God. There was, there was sin. There was corruption. We have to pray the scripture. We have to stay Pray without ceasing, Paul said. This is all part of meditation. This is what he's talking about. Pray without ceasing. Walk in the Spirit. 
Walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. This is all a mindset of heart and mind, a transformation of a life that's changed by the power of God. That you may have success wherever you go. You want to be successful in your life. As a young person, as you get ready to go to college or you get ready to start a new career, you need success in your life. And this is a practical thing. This touches every area of your life. Whether you're in the ministry or whether you're in some other uh, field, if you have success as a Christian, if you have success, you owe that to God. You owe that to the Lord. If he blesses you in your business, if he blesses you in your ministry, that's God. And that's his work in you, his workmanship in us through Christ Jesus. But it touches every area of our life. And you want to be successful. How do you do it? You put on Christ. Ephesians 4. You put off the old man and you put on the new. You put off the old life. You put on Christ. You put Jesus on through the Holy Spirit, through prayer, through meditation. This is a lifestyle. This is what God was wanting of his people. This is what he wants of us today. This is what Jesus was saying to us. That which is flesh can only produce flesh. That which is spirit produces spirit. You want a spirit-filled life? You want to live a victorious life? You want to live in that way? Then you've got to make sacrifices. And the sacrifices you have to make is willingly giving up yourself as a living sacrifice to God. Putting on awesomeness really is just simply reflecting, being a light shining forth the, the power of Jesus Christ through us and to others. A, you meditate on his word. Get deeply into the word of God. Let it be planted in your heart. Be filled with it. Meditate means to speak it forth out of your mouth. Don't let it depart from your mouth. The speaking forth of the word. The living seed that makes us remarkable in God. How could Joshua lead the Israelites through a, a hot desert full of dangerous enemies? Because God said, I will be with you. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. Now see, that's a comfort. If you're Joshua and you got this responsibility that you inherited from Moses, I'm sure Joshua in his flesh was terrified to have to go and lead a people that he knew were disobedient. They weren't listening to Moses. Why would they listen to me? And he's got to lead them to a hot desert. There's enemies on every side ready to devour them. And he's got to do this. And then comes the word, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. He knew something though, didn't he? Joshua, he knew something. He learned. He learned under Moses. He understood the glory of God. He understood the power of God. We are children of God tonight if we accepted Jesus. We are born of his awesomeness, the awesomeness of God to do great things. I was listening once again to the story of Bill Wilson. And um, if some of you may not have heard of Bill Wilson, but he uh, he had a, a incredible a story. He was 12 years old, living in Brooklyn, New York, in 1960. His mother, his father, had split the scene. His mother was an alcoholic. She didn't want him anymore, so she dropped him off on a street corner, left him, abandoned him. Three days. He stayed on that street corner. No food, nothing to drink. P 
people passing by. Nobody stops. Nobody stops. On the third day, a man stops and says to him, son, do you, do you need anything? Do you need help or whatever? And as he began to say, he said he had a bad stuttering problem. He tried to talk to the man and he said, I, my mom left me here. I don't have anywhere to go. I don't have any food or water. The man, it turns out the man was, was a Christian. He was on his way to visit his sick son in the hospital who had cancer. He was on his way to the hospital to visit his son when he comes across Bill Wilson as a young boy, 12 years old. And he said that as he began to talk to him, he went and bought him a Coke and a hamburger. And he got on the phone and, and Bill Wilson tells the story that within five hours of him being on his phone, well, back then he didn't have a cell phone, but whatever phone he had, I guess, you know, his home phone or whatever. I don't know. But anyway, he began to make phone calls and he got him on into a Sunday school summer program. He said it cost $17 and 50 cents and the man had to borrow the money. Got him in the Sunday school program. And, th and it was the first time that Bill Wilson heard about Jesus Christ. And as a boy, he accepted Jesus. He accepted Jesus. He got saved. And he said that was the beginning of his change in his life. And to make a long story short, Bill Wilson, as he grew up, God called him to do something great. He called him to go back to his neighborhoods in Brooklyn. And he started a children's ministry called Metro Ministries. And they bust kids in from all over the city. And they would have these power-packed services for children. And there was children all over the city that were getting off drugs, that were getting saved, that were coming to Jesus. Because of one man that said, I'm willing to give my time to a little boy on the street. And one thing led to another. But I want you to understand that's greatness. That's what greatness is. To be able to go beyond yourself. Jesus said, he that is the servant of all is the greatest of all. A servant's heart. To be willing to witness to one person. To be willing to share and give out of your faith. That you would let your light shine. That's what greatness is. And we all have that in us. If we're saved tonight. We all have that ability. Now I don't think Bill Wilson ever thought. He was going to have a worldwide ministry. But I listened to him. On a video not recently. And he's in every. He's on the continent of Africa. He's got a worldwide children's ministry. Since um, the 70's. When he started that bus ministry. And I seen some of his videos, and I mean, he is a he is an amazing guy. I mean, just the, because the Lord is an amazing God. But he blessed him. He blessed him. He gave him a vision. He gave him a ministry. There was another boy that went to a revival in North Carolina, and there was an evangelist. Mordecai Ham was his name. And he was preaching, and at the end of the service, he gave the altar call, and people were flooding up. And in front of him stood a boy with tears coming down his cheeks. And he looked up at him, and as he was leading those to Christ, he said he sensed something in this boy, greatness, something in him. And lo and behold, it was Billy Graham. Billy Graham is a boy coming to accept Jesus. And I know Mordecai Ham had no idea who was standing before him, one of the greatest evangelists the world will ever know. Greatness, awesomeness coming from our God through the Holy Spirit. There's a greatness that God has for every one of us tonight. You might not be 
uh, going to be the next Billy Graham, but you never know. <laughs> My pastor used to, he came up to me one day. He was an old time Pentecostal preacher, loved him dearly. I wish he was still alive. That man could preach. He could preach. But he came down one day and, 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 and he was walking towards me and he was like, he, you know, this was after God had called me in the ministry. It's like 1984. It was a long time ago. But he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, son, God's going to use you. He said, you're going to do some great things for the kingdom. And, you know, you hear that and you think. I, I in my mind, I didn't it wasn't a pride thing. I was just like. I knew God, I knew his spirit. I knew that he had poured something into me that he wanted me to do. And I, do, do I believe I've fully reached the potential? No, absolutely not. I feel like I've fall, fallen way short of what God wants. But the potential is there, every one of us. But we, we got to understand what greatness is and success because see what the church does is they equate success to numbers. That's all it is to them. You go to a conference, oh, how many people are in your church now? That's the number one question. It's not, hey, how is, is God moving? Or, you know, how, you know, lives being changed. No, how many people? And so that's not the equa equation for greatness and success. Now, sure, we need to grow. I'm all for that. I, I preach that all the time. We need to have success. Numbers is obviously part of that. They recorded the numbers in the book of Acts of people being saved. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with that. But that's not the totality of what success is. If God called you to reach one person, and that was your whole ministry, and you did that, and you were faithful, and you brought one person into the kingdom, that's one soul that didn't go to hell for eternity, then that's worth everything. Now, obviously, God wants us to do more than that. But my point is, success is being a servant. Success is washing each other's feet, loving each other. Jesus said, you'll know, they'll know you're my disciples by the love you have, one for another. Last one is a guy named Dick Eastman. He was attending, or actually, he was speaking at North Central Bible College up in Minneapolis, college I went to. And it's a pretty famous uh, story, but when Brother Eastman went to the college, I wasn't there then, it was before my time. It was like in the 70s. He was a part of a, re of a revival that broke out on the campus, and it went into the whole city of Minneapolis. And when he was speaking, that night, the first night, the Holy Spirit came in and, and filled that chapel to such a degree that the next day there was people all outside of the college waiting to get in. Now, this is before Internet. This is before social media. This is before cell phones. This was word of mouth spreading out the fire of God. And he said the second night, there were people standing outside waiting to get in. They wanted to experience the Holy Spirit, the power of God. And this revival went on for weeks. And it launched his ministry. Changed the world school of prayer came out of that revival. And I told you uh, this last week that I got a map from his ministry, a world prayer map. Every house for Christ. They're trying to reach every human being for Jesus. They think, you know, I mean, greatness, awesomeness, something for God that is awesome. But you never know what God's going to do. Revival can touch anyone at any place. The Holy Spirit can come upon anyone who wants to be filled, anyone who wants to be a world changer that wants to make a difference. And that might just simply mean making a difference at your school, in your neighborhood, making a difference. Start where you're at. Start making a difference. 
Say, I'm going to pray for my neighborhood. I'm going to pray for my community. I know. You say, well, you pastor, it's hard, to, it's hard to witness to people. It is. It's going to take dying to yourself to do it because your flesh is not going to want to do it. But start praying first. Ask God to give you a burden. Ask God to give you a vision. And then he will begin to speak to you. And I guarantee you the greatness that God has put within you will come out. The awesomeness of God. You say, well, what is awesomeness? Let me just give you one last story tonight. I'm going to close because I'm I, you know, going to preach all night here. I don't want to be like Paul, preach five hours and have somebody fall out a window and die. <laughs> That really happened. And then Paul raised him from the dead, so it was all good. But when you think about this, greatness, awesomeness. I'm going to put on my awesomeness today. What does that mean? It means I'm going to, I'm going to put on everything that God wants me to be today. With what he's given me, I'm going to use it. With all the ability that he's given me. Whether that be, you know, one last story. I've shared this before, but it is worthy of, of repeat. The late, great D.L. Moody, again, one of the greats. D.L. Moody was incredible preacher. I would loved to have lived in the day that he preached, because that man could preach. He was one of the great orators of all time. And he went to England. And while he was in London, he was preaching and across London and across England. And he met up with, with a pastor who said, I got somebody you need to meet. And he said, okay. He said, it's a, it's a girl that has a disease and she's, she's bed, bed fast. She can't, she's paralyzed, can't get up from the bed. But she's an incredible person, and I want you to meet her. So he's okay, of course. He made time, went went to her, went to her, and he gets in the house, and he sees this girl that is is in her bed, and she's excited, oh, so excited to meet Dale Moody. He said he looked at her and immediately had empathy and compassion for her, being in the condition that she was in. But he saw a joy and a peace and a glow and a glory on her face like he had never seen on, in anyone. And he said, at that moment, I realized I was in the presence of Almighty God. Like he's never felt before. And as they were talking and discussing, she said that a couple of years ago, she heard him on the radio preaching. And she immediately wrote in her journal, I will pray for D.L. Moody every day that people will be saved. And for two years, every day, she prayed for D.L. Moody. And she showed him in her journal that she'd been praying for him and that she was so glad to finally meet him. And at that moment, he said, I felt like I was about that small. He said, I was in the presence of a giant. A giant of the faith. An amazing girl that prayed for me. And he said, around that time is when the Holy Spirit began to pick up in my ministry. About two years ago, I sensed a change in the wind of the Holy Spirit in my ministry. And it began to grow. And it began to be blessed. And people were getting saved more, more easily. As I would give the altar calls, there were people that would almost run to the altar. And he said, I never knew why until I sat down and met this girl. And there was the answer. She had been praying for the Holy Ghost to move. And he did. And at that moment, he realized who was, who had the real greatness. So it wasn't me. Sure, I preached. Sure, I did what God wanted me to do. But everything gets traced back, doesn't it? To prayer. That Those that are great are those that are humble. 
that nobody ever knows who they are. Usually they don't ever get any recognition because they just love Jesus and they're hungry and they're humble and